that key top with those pants? Mm. All right, everyone. Welcome back to another Scotty Karate video. Today, we're going to go over our geese. So, if your school or dojo requires you to buy your own gi from them, then this might be a moot point. Might be good information to know, and definitely know, but you have to know what you have to work with. So, for example, if you go to your dojo or your school, and they say you have to buy our gi from our shop, there it is, go get it. I mean, it is what it is, you have to go buy theirs. Um, not really a fan of those schools, but it is what it is. And then you have the other end of the spectrum, they're like, we don't even use a gi. Or, yeah, as long as you're covered, I don't care what it looks like, come on in. I'm more on that range, personally. But, some schools require very specific things. They either want you to buy their gi, so they have a store. Some, in the middle, be like, yeah, I don't care what you wear. As long as you have a patch with our emblem on it, and we'll sell you the patch for, you know, 20 bucks or whatever they sell it for. Or you have the ones where I go, I don't care, as long as it's not, you know, flamingo color, I don't care. Come on in. It doesn't matter. But know your school. Know what they require and what they'll accept. These are all things we're going to be talking about on today's episode of... All right. Number one. We're going to be talking about sizes. Yep. So the size of your key matters. <laughs> so when you start martial art or you've never trained, or you say you haven't trained a long time anyway, you don't remember, or you don't know what size you are. It's not a big deal. When you first start, the head instructor, or whoever's teaching the class, will be able to come over and go, okay, with your height and your weight, mm, I don't know, you're about size five. That's easy. You're easy now. And the good news about a geek cut or a uniform is they're very forgiving. So if, let's say, you buy a size five, and it's just a smidge on the tight side. Okay, so your, your, your gi will be a little bit wider. You'll, you know, might be a tiny bit tight in the pants, but nothing dramatic. It's very forgiving. They're usually very cut very big, so you have mobility. So it's not going to be that bad. Or if you get a little longer, you know, it might be a little bit longer on your gi top, or maybe your sleeves are like, <laughs> you know, they're up to here, and you can't really, you know, when you punch, your sleeves falling over your hand. That's fine. It happens. That leads me to bonus tip. When you do buy gi, make sure to have it tailored. Literally, so let's say it's just your gi pants. It costs like 10 to 15 bucks to get it tailored. It's not a big deal. Go spend that for go, okay, I need it this length. How I'm tailored. All they do is cut it off, fold it, stitch it. So if they're charging more than like 15 bucks, they're probably trying to rip you off. Sorry, but it's true. So, each style has their own gi or uniform, and then they have their own sizings. So, for example, if you're size 5 in traditional karate gi, and you decide to go to a, say, jiu-jitsu class, and they're like, you need to buy one of our jiu-jitsu gis, you might be, say, an A2 in a jiu-jitsu gi, but you're size 5 in karate. So, if you walk in going, I'm a size 5, they're going to go, whoa, whoa, no you're not. Uh, uh, no you're not, because that's humongous. It is what it is. Go with their size, same thing. Well, I don't know, what size do you think I am? They'll be like, mm -hmm, I think based on blah, like, you're an A2, great. Here's your key. Not a big deal. Every style has their own size. It's easy to find out, and they're all pretty forgiving. Next, we'll call this 1.2 or 1.5. I don't know. This is a bonus. So, when you do buy your gi, I do say you go a size bigger. And here's why. So, let's say you're a size 5. You buy a size 6. Here's why. When you go home, you're going to wash it. Right? You're going to be sweaty, you're working out, you're going to wash it. Depending on who you listen to or what your instructors tell you to, some will say, do not put it in the dryer. Some don't care. I don't care. I put mine in the dryer. I don't think it does anything to have them hang dry except for take a week to dry. But it's up to you. I mean, your call. If you want to have, say, three geese and you go three days a week and you just wash them as you get them, hang them up in your bathroom or something, that's you. But if you wash them on hot, 
you put them in the dryer on hot as soon as you get it, it's going to come out, it's going to shrink a little. Now the material is pretty thick, so it's not going to shrink a lot, but it will shrink a little bit, and that will help you get your sizing. So if you bought a size 6 and you're really around a size 5, it will shrink up to where it's a little bit loose, but it's more closer fit to what you would need. And you have a little room to grow. So if you gain a little weight, say you're a kid and you grow a little more, so on, you have more room to grow in there. And plus, you can now have it tailored, and it's, you know it's going to stay that size. It's not going to shrink on you. Number two, we're going into the weight of the gi. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, each gi, especially in karate, we'll talk about karate, is very different. So you'll have a wild, wide range of different sizes, and they'll go by either grams or ounces. So, for example, a 14-ounce gi might say 50 grams. But I'm going to use ounces today so we can keep everything straight. So a very beginner gi that most people buy, especially if you don't know if you even want to do martial arts, will be an 8-ounce gi. Now, these are again gis that you can buy at, like, Academy or Dick Sporting Goods, any kind of those places, and they're going to be very, very thin. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you take this example, this is a 8-ounce gi. And if you can see, it's almost see-through. Okay. Now, with that being said, let me show you as close as I can. Look at the quality of the stitch and the thickness of it. It's very thin. Now, it's very lightweight. So, what does that mean for you? Well, that means that when you're training, you're going to be able to breathe. So, if you're in a very humid or hot climate or part of the year, that might be what you choose because it's going to be very light. But I will warn you, it is see-through once it gets wet. So once you start sweating and you're like, yeah, you do your high kick and you're wearing your polka dot Power Ranger underwear, boom, everybody's going to see it. You're going to, it's just, it's visible. So be aware of that. This, these are geese that I recommend for kids, especially when their parents come in and they're like, I don't want to know. I don't know if... You know, the little Susie really wants to do karate. Well, don't spend a lot on the gi. You know, these are like 25 bucks at Academy. Not that expensive. The next one up is a 10 ounce. Now, this one is one that I like to use a lot. Um, this is more of my everyday training gi. Like if I'm just out doing um, kata or just doing a good workout, you know, this is what I'll use. So it's a little bit thicker. If you can see in it, it's still slightly see-through-ish. Like, it's not that bad. Let me uh, get up on the camera so you can see it here. And so you have a lot better quality stitch. It's a lot more sturdy, but it is still very breathable. Okay? So with your 10-ounce uh, key, that's a good lasting key. Now, that one I just showed you, I've had easy 14 years. Been through the ringer. It's also been through the washer and dryer. They last. Once you buy a good key, they'll last a while. And that one, like I said, I've had forever. I have multiples in each size, depending on what I'm doing that day. Moving on up, we've got a 12 ounce. Okay, now, what do you get when you get a 12 ounce? Well, it is going to be your durable key. This is going to be the one you keep forever type. Now, it is very thick. It's almost as the, the stiffness and the that texture, the quality of blue jeans. So if you got a good pair of blue jeans and you're like, you know, you tug on it and you're not moving, it's not going nowhere, that's kind of what your good 12 ounce key is going to be like. So you can kind of see through here, not really see through. It's very solid. If you look at the seams, it's very thick, easy to grab. So if you're doing a lot of throws, the collar on this won't tear on you. Now, if you'll see on this one, over years of training, they do fray. They do wear. But this is another one I've had for a very, very long time. Many years. And as you start to grab, right, your opponents, your training partners start to grab your gi and they start yanking on it, it will get torn up. It, it will happen. Now, what that means is once you do invest in a good gi, you don't need to again. So understand that. We're going to talk about cost in a minute. But a 12 ounce gi is what more I recommend if your style is more of a grappling style. Go on to the heaviest, 14 ounce. So that's what this is. So if you want to take a look at it, it's very thick. 
pretty nice. Durable. You won't see through it, right? You can yank on it, pull on it. It doesn't change. So when someone takes you and they grab you and they throw, this isn't going to give. It's going to last a lot longer, and it's good for that type of thing. Prices I hadn't really went over, they vary wildly. I mean wildly. You can go to, a say, Academy, like I said, and get your cheapo 8-ounce key. 20 bucks, 25 bucks, wherever they are. Then you go up to your 10-ounce key, and let's say you go to a place like Century, right? It's a good brand. A 10-ounce key at Century is going to cost you about 50, 60 bucks. Still not terrible, right? It's doable, especially if it lasts for a while. Do a little research, and honestly, try. If your dojo has a lot of people that have different gis, you know, they're not required to have a certain gi or buy from them, look around. Ask them. Say, hey, your gi looks good. You've been here for a while. Did you just buy it or has it been, you know, good? And like, oh, no, it's worked great, you know. And they'll tell you. And they'll tell you where to get it. And they'll tell you, like, on the tag, they'll say, you know, Juca, whatever it is. You can then kind of assess what quality or what brand. Prices, though, you can pay for a, say you want a 12 ounce key, just a good middle, fairly heavy, but good gi, you're going to pay around 80 and you can get up to like the tuxedo type quality gis where they are very proud of their stuff and they're $400. I personally, I don't see the benefit of that. I've seen them personally trained with people that have these extremely expensive gis. They don't do anything different. They don't even look any different. They just have a different tag at the bottom. I just, I just cannot. I just can't. Number three, the colors. Oh my goodness, the colors. Okay, so I don't know if you've been training or not, but if you have and you went into the dojo and there's just every color out of the rainbow there, man. It is distracting. <laughs> but you have a lot of traditional dojos that are like, no, white, only white, you can only have white. So we're going to be going over the colors, what you should get, and maybe why you shouldn't choose certain colors. All right. First up is always white. Most dojos will accept white or want white, especially for karate, more karate centered. But if you're going for clean, classic, traditional, a white gi won't let you down. And even if they allow other colors, most of them will accept a white gi or even prefer it. Outside of that, the next one everybody goes for is black. Now, I will say this, in a traditional martial art, they usually hold black gis for the upper ranks. So let's we'll say you have to get to a black belt before they'll let you wear a black gi. That's very common. Um, you might have to be a certain rank before you can wear it, or maybe certain days, or whatever their criteria are. But even then, you'll still see these dojos where they have people that wear black keys. You'll still have some that are higher ranks still wearing a white key. Unless it's just strictly you are in a black key at this rank, no matter what. Next up is going to be our bold colors. Reds, yellows, oranges. I know some of these are like, I've never seen anybody in a yellow key. Oh, wait. You'll go to some tournaments and you'll be like, Yellow? What? It is what it is. Know that these are flash colors. All right? Nobody goes to a, a tournament wearing a yellow gi and wants to skate under the radar. It just doesn't happen. So know that. You're going to be targeted. You're going to be looked at. If that's what you're going for, great. Just know that, that it's going to happen. If you want to kind of skate under the radar... Those are some cool colors. So, cool colors being blues, greens, purple. Okay? So, these are very common. You'll get into sports like jiu-jitsu, and almost everybody's either in a black, blue, purple. It's a more neutral color. It's a calmer color. It's just, eh. If you start off and you're not wanting to be the guy that everybody targets, blue, green, purple. These are good, solid colors. They look good. It's your choice. Alright, so I hope that helped you out. At least give you some kind of basis so you know what you're kind of looking at. And if you've been trained for a while, hopefully it opened your eyes a little bit.
I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever bought a Color Gi. If your dojo likes Color Gis or if they're strictly, you must wear white. Let me know in the comments below. And if you liked it, please share, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when my videos are being posted. And as always, the more you train, easier the fight.